This story is bizarre and without precedent, but the account of the Russian Navy divers encountering three meter, 10 feet tall alien creatures underwater wearing skin tight bodysuits and jellyfish helmets is so intriguing it must be acknowledged and remembered. Let's explore. Hi everyone and welcome to Project Blue Book where we explore all things unidentified. I am Thor and thanks for tuning in. Lake Baikal is located in the northeastern Russia in the middle of Siberia, a beautiful lake combining breathtaking sceneries like that of Lake Cuomo in Italy as well as vastness in size and scope. It's the deepest lake on earth at whopping 1.6 miles it covers 31,000 square kilometers or 12,500 square miles, the size of the state of Maryland or Belgium. It holds 6,000 cubic miles of water or 23,000 cubic kilometers, making it the largest freshwater lake on Earth. It holds one fifth of the freshwater on planet Earth. And as if that's not enough already, it is also the clearest lake of the large lakes, affording 30 meter visibility at 50 meter depth, unpolluted and home to a science research center that includes one of the largest underwater telescopes on Earth. It's got islands, sandy beaches, giant cliffs and valleys, and thousands of wildlife species near its incredibly oxygen rich shoreline. It's remote to most regions of the world, but not to the 600,000 people living in the Irkutsk region. With all of this recognized and knowing the biolab focus of Ebens on Earth, Lake Baikal would be a natural resource as well as a research subject to anyone monitoring, managing, manipulating or utilizing Earth's biological resources. It would be an Eben destination. Historically, Lake Baikal has a folklore of mysterious activity, and in recent times, people have repeatedly seen UFOs over the lake, on the lake, and around the lake, including the account of Valery Rudensov, a local resident that on April 17, 1987, along with 13 other eyewitnessing villagers, saw a huge craft hovering in the air only 150 meters away. They could almost touch it. It spanned 70 meters in width and they saw the surface of it as clearly metallic with a phosphorescent purple ray beaming down from its center. And it had yellow portals around its edges. It hung in the air right above them as if allowing them to observe it. And then it slid away and disappeared silently behind a nearby hill heading towards Lake Baikal. Let's also remember stories of alien abductees who have been taken across the sea to an underwater alien base like the account of Filiberto Cardenas and 70% of the earth is covered with water and we know less about its depth than we know about the surface of Mars. It seems ideal for secret bases if you have the technology to manage it, especially under thick sheets of ice for further protection like in Antarctica and in Lake Baikal. The encounter between the seven Russian Navy divers and the alien divers of Lake Baikal occurred in 1982 while diving as a training exercise in the winter through a hole in the ice that covered parts of the lake underneath the 5 to 10 meter thick ice sheet at a depth of about 50 meters or 160 feet the divers were acclimating to the frigidly cold near freezing temperature of the water when they realized they were being watched. Approaching them from a distance were lit up creatures that when they came closer looked to be humanoid in shape, only much larger than humans at about 10 feet or 3 meters in height, and there were several of them. The Navy divers froze in their tracks at first, figuratively speaking, as they observed these creatures wearing what looked to be skin tight bodysuit, shiny silver gray or light bluish in color, and over their head 
They had what looked like a helmet made of jellyfish or something similar because it was flexible but seemed to maintain an unbreakable bubble of air inside of it. There were no oxygen tanks and no pipes or wires, just the skin-tight suit and the jellyfish helmet, those two pieces of equipment. Clearly, this was technology unknown to man, and it did the job of sustaining these creatures against the cold, enabling them freedom of movement, no risk of water leaks, and plenty of secure oxygen. They had radioed to the surface what they were encountering, and now they received an order to try to capture one of these creatures and bring it to the surface. As they moved in unison towards one of the creatures with a net and a rope, a wave or sonar frequency explosion occurred, and the seven Russian divers were thrust upward through the ice and onto the surface. Because of the rapid ascent, they suffered divers' injuries of the bends, a decompression sickness that can be deadly. Three of the divers died and four were saved inside a compression chamber. After remaining in critical condition for a while, they all suffered long-term disabilities as a result of the incident. The images we are sharing here, made by Discovery Plus, are based on descriptions given by the surviving divers, confirmed to closely resemble what they actually saw. They did give accounts of their experiences that was long held as a classified secret of the Soviet army and details were later leaked to Professor Vladimir Azaza, a former Soviet naval officer himself and a known Soviet ufologist, who first documented the story in a book published in Russian and later in the West in English, including in a Stonehill and Mantle book, Russia's USO Secrets, published in English in 2016. He heard it from Soviet diving trainers Mark Steinberg and Gennady Swertov, who named a senior officer in charge of the diving team at the time of the incident, a major general by the name of Demyanenko. All of these names check off as existing with the right authority and at the right time within the Soviet Navy. Professor Asasha has therefore established a chain of custody to authenticate this information. For the record, the Russian army never disclosed this information or any information on USOs or UFO incidents, and they do not have a Freedom of Information Act in Russia. We know about this event through leaks only, and as such, they have been ridiculed by the Russian government and criticized by skeptics as unreliable. But according to Professor Asasha, the KGB immediately took hold of all the information pertaining to the incident and classified it as top secret with a desire and intent to pursue a later capture of the Ebens for the purpose of acquiring their technology for military use, a pattern familiar and logical from within any military. The first instinct is to pursue the valuable technology presented by the incident. The lake has been explored and deep-dived with compression-resistant manned submarines that have reached the bottom of the lake at 1.6 miles in depth, and they come back without reporting alien encounters. But there is a second event that corroborates the encounter of the seven Navy divers with the alien swimmers. In 1977, Soviet scientist Alexander Potrachansky reported an incident while diving at the bottom of the lake at over one mile depth. The crew on board a Canadian-built submarine, Pisces 7, finishing their 40-second dive doing biological research, they decided to turn off the external lights of the submarine to see what they could observe with daylight alone at the bottom of the lake. Once the lights were shut off, Alexander and his crew realized the area around them remained lit up from every direction, as if an unseen light source was shining a light at them and their submarine. They were being observed, but did not see anyone observing. A minute later, the unknown external light source was switched off, leaving them in near total darkness at the bottom of the lake. In the 1950s, a Soviet Tu-104 jet crashed into the lake after pursuing an unidentified flying object, and as recently as 2009, 
NASA released a photo taken from the International Space Station that appears to show a USO emerging from Lake Baikal. It was one of two claimed identical areas observed on the lake, each a perfectly round circle at around three miles in diameter, creating indents into the ice that will be very difficult to replicate artificially. And the perfectly round indents do not appear naturally, as far as we know. As to the alien divers of Lake Baikal, they have not been seen again since the 1982 event. However, there are these 7,000-year-old cave paintings from northern Italy near Lake Cuomo serving up an intrigue for comparison. You can watch and listen to this and other podcasts on Project Blue Book where we explore all things unidentified. Each day, let's practice compassion and kindness. And please subscribe. I am Thor, and thanks for listening. See you next time.